All right, so we're going to keep it on uranium here. Um, you know, Mike Alkin's done a great job talking about the space. Uh, I think the key thing here on Denison is that uh, we have a new study on our flagship asset, Wheeler River, and it, it is new. It's from September. It, uh, it's based on real data um, using today's spot price largely, and I think that's something that's very interesting. So let's, let's jump into it. I want to touch, about, touch on Uranium Participation Corp as well. Uh, Denison is an Athabasca Basin focused uranium developer. Uh, we have exploration development assets centered largely in the eastern portion of the Athabasca Basin. That's what you're seeing here on the map. It's, it's our ground. We have a large land position, 320,000 hectares. Our flagship is that property between MacArthur River and Key Lake. It's called Wheeler River. We have a 90% interest there. Uh, other assets you have to pay attention to is our 22.5% interest in the McLean Lake Mill, as well as our exploration flagships or our high priority properties on the exploration side, Waterbury Lake and Hook Carter. Now, as I mentioned, uh, we have put out a new pre-feasibility study for our flagship Wheeler River. Uh, I think we are truly the exception to the rule here because the outcome is a project that makes money at today's spot price. Uh, it does not require a $50 uranium price, but I think Mike Alkin is 100% right that the majority of projects out there cannot be justified and cannot advance in today's market. And that's fundamentally what makes our story very interesting, is that we're one project. We might be the best project in terms of undeveloped assets out there, and we don't fix the broad picture from a supply-demand standpoint, but we can move our project forward. And we've recently announced that we are initiating the permitting and environmental assessment process for this project. Now, why would we do that? It's all about the economics. So I want to just touch on some of the highlights, and then we're going to jump into a video to talk through the project. Uh, the PFS was highlighted by a selection of mining method. So we've selected in situ recovery as our mining method for our exceptionally high grade Phoenix deposit. So ISR represents over half of the world's uranium production today, and it's the lowest cost mining method for uranium. What we're gonna do is bring that mining method for the first time to the Athabasca Basin, where we actually have the highest grade uranium deposits. And Phoenix in particular is the highest grade undeveloped uranium deposit in the world. Putting those two things together, we've got a very, very low OPEX estimated for this project. So you need to remember one thing from this presentation. It is our estimated OPEX at Phoenix, $3.33 a pound US. Okay, today's spot price is just around $29. It means we have a 90% operating margin right now. Okay, we don't need $50 to get that, we have it today. Now we ran our economics using that spot price deck that UXC puts together, and the prices start in the $29 range, basically starting using today's spot price. Now the project also has a deposit that's in basement rock and is amenable to conventional underground mining called Griffin, and we tack that on to add scale to the project. Initial capex in the range of $323 million, which is quite affordable. Our peers uh, in the Athabasca Basin that are looking at building mills and large amounts of infrastructure, they're looking at north of a billion dollars in capex. So just quickly on Phoenix and why ISR works. Uh, Phoenix, for the, largest, uh, for the longest time, uh, was sometimes seen as an undesirable deposit, uh, and part of that had to do with the geological setting. So it is in sandstone above the really competent basement rock. And sandstone is, is it's permeable, it's filled with water in the Athabasca Basin, and it's often broken up and, and, and very unstable. Uh, of course, those sound like terrible things uh, for an underground mine. And we've seen at Cigar Lake that that certainly is a challenge. But those same attributes are what make it amenable to solution mining or in situ mining because we're actually gonna use that to move a mining solution through our rock and mine it out without ever going underground. And that's what ISR is all about, and you need permeability. Many of the discoveries in the basin right now, uh, outside of Phoenix, they're in basement rock and ISR just doesn't work. So let's jump to a video here and I'll see if we can kickstart it. Okay, and I'll, I'll narrate us through this. I'll just walk you through Wheeler River and, and Phoenix and Griffin. So of course we are in the Athabasca Basin in northern Saskatchewan. 
Uh, Wheeler River is located along the Hall Road and the power line that connects the MacArthur River Mine to the Key Lake Mill. We're going to drop down here. You'll see that infrastructure on the right. And you'll see the road and the power line that we're going to push in and the two deposits, about three kilometers between those two deposits. What we're going to do is first fly in to take a look at our Phoenix deposit. You'll see here two high-grade pods. It's Phoenix Zone A and Zone B. These are in that sandstone above those basement rocks. Again, permeability. What you're seeing now is something very unique to us. It's, it's a freezing system that will actually encapsulate our deposit with an ice wall. It gives us a fixed bar barrier for our ISR mining. Here's a, just an example of how ISR works. We're pumping a solution into the ground. It's moving through that permeable sandstone, leaching the uranium as it moves towards a recovery well and then being recovered as a uranium rich solution. So there's no shafts here, there's no underground people. You'll see our, our, our grid here surrounding that freeze dome with, with monitoring wells to make sure that all of our mining stays within our freeze dome. Here's another look at it. It's in cross section. You see that blue arc? That's our freeze dome. It's giving us perfect containment of our mining solution. It means we have no dilution and we're not affecting the regional groundwater. That uranium rich solution is going to be recovered and piped to a processing plant on our property where we have a very simple flow sheet. It's basically remove iron and then precipitate the uranium out, package it and send it off to a converter. Uh, $3.33 average OPEX, all in, all in, under $9 US. That's initial CAPEX, sustaining CAPEX, and OPEX. We've now jumped over to Griffin, which is underground, shaft access. There's no freezing here. We're in those basement rocks, so it's dry. Here we've got an OPEX under $12 US and an all in under $23. So even Griffin does really well in today's price environment. Our Griffin production would be trucked up to our McLean mill where we already own 22.5% and where there's excess licensed capacity today. You'll see that we start with Phoenix and then we bring Griffin on to add scale, uh, really to give us flexibility to number one, be levered to the spot price when it comes to Phoenix and the contract price when it comes to Griffin. All right, so just to round out Denison here uh, and then a quick word on UPC, but. Uh, Wheeler River is our flagship, 90% in that, there's no doubt about that. You cannot lose sight of the value in that mill. Here's a visual of that mill. This mill's got a billion dollars into it in historical costs. We own 22.5%. Think of that just from a replacement standpoint. It's accounting for over half of our market cap right now. We have other assets that really the market's not valuing today because they are smaller scale, but, but they certainly have value in a better market. Uh, and we have an exploration portfolio that we're active on that could lead to a, a satellite pod on Wheeler or a new discovery on Hook Carter or Waterbury Lake uh, as we're working it in 2019. And the last point here as a segue into UPC is that we're actually generating cash flow. Now we're a developer and we don't have production, but we're generating cash flow so that we don't dilute our shareholders by constantly having to raise equity. We're doing it by operating an environmental services business in Northern Ontario, taking care of our own closed mine sites and BHP's closed mine sites. And we're managing a company called Uranium Participation Corp. So UPC, just last words here, is a company that has physical uranium. It's the pure play in the space. It's listed on the TSX. It's independent from Denison other than the management contract, okay? Uh, with UPC, we really have a simple story. We own uranium. It's out of the ground, it's in storage, it's in the drum, whatever you wanna say. We've got about 17 and a half million pounds U308 equivalent that's already out of the ground. So when you're buying a share of UPC, you'll see down there on the bottom left of that slide, uh, you really have your notional cut of our inventory. Each share is basically has its attributable interest in 0.1288 pounds U308. And so the share price will change as the value of the uranium changes. Right now we have a NAV around $5 a share, and we're trading very close to that, probably a slight discount to that on the market. So real simple story, here it's all about just getting exposure to the commodity without the risk of a mining company. It's always a trade. You have a little bit less risk, you're certainly gonna have a little bit less upside when it comes to comparing a Denison to a UPC, but sometimes it's about finding the right product for the investor, and some investors are more or less sensitive to risk, so this is a good alternative. All right, with that, uh, I'm 
all done. So thanks very much, everybody.